Hi, I'm Greg Geske with The Waters Company. I've been with Waters for 30 years and I'm currently the Director of Global Sales and Marketing for Waters. Um, today we're going to talk about compressed air foam systems, why we use them, uh, how they are used, and, and how steps that we've made uh, the CAF systems actually easier to operate. So the reason we use compressed air foam, uh, earlier segments I talked about Class A foam and, and what it does to the water, and it increases the surface area so that that the water can actually do things better. It can absorb more heat. Um, the foam can actually stick higher in the room so it can absorb heat and it stays up there longer. Um, before I talked about fighting fires with plain waters, like throwing beach balls at the fire, it's a relatively low surface area compared to the mass of the water. By adding class A foam, we increase that surface area and now it's like throwing throwing soccer balls at the fire. Well with compressed air foam what we do is we make the foam in the foam manifold and then we inject foam into the hose line and we create bubbles as that uh, solution and air travel down the hose line and it's like throwing a bunch of ping pong balls at the fire. So uh, there's two different kinds of compressed air foam that we actually use uh, when we fight fires and use it for exposure protection. One is wet foam and wet foam on an inch and three quarter hose we uh, use about 90 to 100 gallons per minute of water and about 40 to 45 to 50 percent or, or 50 CFM uh, makes up the balance in the hose. So we're, that's that basically would be a wet foam that we'd use on an inch and three quarter hose line with a 15 16 tip and a, a, a 100 PSI operated at. We can also make what's called a fluid foam or sometimes it's referred to as a dry foam and at that point we're using about 20 gallons per minute of water and our air typically goes up to about 80 to 100 CFM and we can use that fluid foam for exposure protection. Uh, we can pre-treat a, a, a structure which will help it or we can use it for exposures at, at, uh, when we have a, a house that's close to another house that's on fire we can use it for explosion protection. So early calf systems were relatively difficult to operate. We had to adjust the amount of flows. We had to adjust the amount of pressures that we have. So nowadays we've uh, made the systems relatively easy to use. Um, we can have the compressor engage and compressors can be driven via PTO, uh, an engine, a clutch, or they can be direct driven, but all the systems can be the same to operate on the panel. Um, we can have them automated so as soon as the pump is engaged, the foam system comes on, the compressor is engaged. It's in an auto feature where we call it an auto sync where our pump pressure and air pressure actually match each other. So we'll uh, show you later uh, how easy it is to operate on, on the pump panel and uh, steps that we, we've taken to, to make it easier to operate. Um, we also take it a step further. We have what's called a Eclipse Gen 2.0 which actually has a touch screen um, that uses a pressure reducing valve so it doesn't matter what kind of pressure we have coming in from our hydrant and it'll help us uh, so that we can get as much air out of the system and those pressures will balance again. So, um, why we use compressed air foam? Uh, again, I, previously I've talked about with our foam systems and, and, and Class A foam use, there's been some studies that were done out there. Uh, one that was done in Salem, Connecticut, where they compre compared Class A foam, uh, plain water, and compressed air foam. And compressed air foam can be up to five to seven times more effective than plain water at, again, bringing that temperature down in the room uh, from 900 degrees down to 212 degrees. So, there was also a study that was duplicated uh, similar in Palmdale, uh, California, where they went to a military base and they used three identical buildings, brought brand new furniture into those buildings, and then they <clears throat> again brought the fire up to 900 degrees. They did a, a, an attack with plain water foam and compressed air foam, and our numbers were that the uh, compressed air foam was about five times more effective uh, than, than, than plain water. Um, for bringing that temperature down on the, in the compressed air uh, attack. So uh, foam, Class A foam was twice as effective. Compressed air foam is about five times more effective. So today we'll be talking about operation of compressed air foam and we'll also be discussing uh, the maintenance of the system's operation. Um, so follow me and we'll go outside and I'll, I'll show you out on the pump panel how the systems operate.
Now we're out at our pump panel with the water uh, calf system that's equipped with. Uh, with this system, we try to set up as much as we can that's automatic. As soon as I engage the pump and I come to the pump panel, we're going to have a foam system that's activated. The compressor's on. It's actually in its auto mode so that the pump pressure is matching uh, with the air pressure. At this point, when I get out to the panel, first thing I have to do is open my tank to pump valve, crack my tank fill. I'm going to hit my preset on my governor, bring it up to my 100 PSI that I want. Now I'm ready to charge any of the calf discharges that we have. And on this apparatus, we have a front bumper, two cross lays, which are inch and three quarter hoses with 15 16 sip. And we have a rear two and a half that's calves capable that we can uh, direct up a aerial waterway or we can go to a ground monitor. So uh, in this example, I'll be charging the middle cross lay. So I'd start to open that. As soon as I start to see pump pressure, at this point, I'm going to flip my air on. I'm going to adjust this to about 90 to 100 gallons per minute of uh, flow of solution. Uh, the resulting amount of air that I'm going to have in there again is about 45 to 50 CFM of air. So at this point, I'm, I'm uh, flowing wet calves to that discharge. If I wanted to charge another discharge, I could just open that up and uh, again turn the air on. We can have calves flowing out of a second discharge. If I don't want to make dry calves, I will gate the discharge down to about a 20 gallon per minute flow. Um, if I want to make it even drier or more fluid foam for exposure protection, I can bump the foam system from three tenths of a percent up to about a half a percent. And that'll even give me a more fluid or drier foam. Um, when we get done running the system, uh, in order to flush it out, all I have to do is turn the air off. I'll turn the foam system off. Open the discharge a little bit more. At this point, I'd radio out to my nozzle. Uh, engine 11 nozzle, let me know when I have clear water. They'd flow uh, a certain amount of water till that uh, foam solution is flushed out of the foam manifold, out of the hose line. And uh, once, the, once it is running clear, I can close my discharge and I'll open the air back up. Um, by purging or using the air that we have from the calf system, I can now purge the water that's out in the line so we don't have to walk the lines when we get done to clear the system out. So once the uh, water's all blown out, shut the air off to that discharge, uh, I can come back down to idle and disengage my pump. Okay, now we're out at our pump panel with our water e equipped uh, calf system. This one's set up uh, so that everything is pretty much automatic and engaged uh, when we get out to the pump panel. As soon as we get out to the pump panel, our foam system is on and is ready. Um, we have our compressors engaged, our auto sink is already in the auto position. So as, uh, as I bring up my discharge pressure, my air pressure is actually going to match my uh, Water, my air pressure is going to match my, my discharge uh, water pressure. So uh, first step I have to do when I get out at the panel is I'll open my tank to pump. I'll crack my tank circ line so that I'm recirculating water from tank to pump, pump to tank, to keep the system cool. I'm going to hit my preset on my governor, which will bring the pump up to 100 PSI. My air at that time will also go up to 100 PSI and match the water pressure. Then I'm going to come over to my CAFS discharge. This truck is actually equipped with uh, what's called an I Elkhart ICS valve uh, for CAFS use. Okay, once I get over to my Elkhart ICS valve, with this system it's designed to go to a preset wet setting upon hitting calves on. At that time it will also turn on my air valve. So it's timed so that it gives the valve about two seconds uh, before the air is actually introduced. So I've got a good quality calves out at the nozzle all at the same time and I have to pre-flow uh, less air and, uh, and or solution out of it beforehand. So I just press calves on. Again, the valve is going to open up to the wet calves position. You heard a click there, that's turning on the air. Now if we look out at our calves discharge now, we have a, uh, uh, at this point we have a wet calves. Uh, this is flowing about uh, 95 gallons per minute of water. It's about 45 to 50 CFM of air. And this is a, a calves discharge that we're going to use for structural attack. Uh, one of the important things is that we use a smooth bore nozzle. Because the bubble structure is actually formulated in the hose line, um, we don't 
want to go through a fog nozzle. It is one way that we can go through the fog nozzle to make it a wetter foam if we're using it for overhaul. But initial attack, we're going to want that uh, uh, retain that bubble structure so we go through a smooth bore nozzle. Again, this, this wet discharge right now is demonstrating uh, what wet cast is. If I want to go to a dry cast, I'm going to press the calf select button twice. It'll go to a dry calf. So at this point, the discharge is gating closed. It's going to bring my flow down to about 20 gallons per minute. The air flow is going to go up to about 80 to 100 CFM of air. Uh, dry calves or fluid calves, as I had talked about before, is what we use for exposure protection. You can see in this video here now uh, how it adheres to the tree so we can use it for exposure protection and or um, uh, exposure protection for, for buildings that are close to our fire or we can pre-treat a structure before a wildland fire comes through. Um, if I want to make it a little bit wetter, a little bit drier, you always have the option of opening up the discharge a little bit more or closing the discharge a little bit more to make it wetter, drier at that position. Another way that I can make a drier fluid foam again is by adjusting my foam percentage up to uh, from three tenths of a percent to five tenths of a percent. Now what I'm going to demonstrate is flushing out the foam and the calf system when I get done. So at this point I'm going to turn off my air, open the discharge a little bit, and I'm going to turn the foam system off. I can radio out to my nozzle, I can say engine one, nozzle, uh, let me know when it's clear water. They will continue to flow uh, water until it's clear. As you can see in the video, once it's clear, I'm going to close the valve actually turn the air back on for that discharge. The valve's closed, we're just discharging air into the discharge. Now you can see he's purging and uh, opening and closing the discharge and purging all the water that's in the discharge so that we don't have to walk the hose line to get the water out of it. Once that's done, I can disengage my uh, air for that system, come back to idle on the apparatus and disengage the pump. Now we're going to talk about maintenance of the calf system. Uh, primarily during truck checks, the two couple things that we do is uh, your, every calf system is going to have an oil or site level gauge on it. Um, we're just going to check that site level gauge and make sure that the oil level is in the site level gauge. And then the other thing that we want to do is open up the Y strainer. You're going to find a Y strainer on the system. Uh, the Y strainer actually strains the water that goes through the cooler and cools the uh, oil in the compressor and it can fill up with debris. Just opening that up flushes it out. You can do that with uh, just the head pressure that's in the pump. So opening up the Y strainer and uh, again checking the oil level. We're going to add oil and uh, all of our compressors use ISO 68 hydraulic oil so we're going to top that off, bring it back up into the site level gauge if it's not there. So um, yearly we change the oil that's in the compressor, we change the oil filter and once every two years uh, at that point we, we uh, take an, it, there's an air oil separator filter that's changed. Um, once a year your compressor should be checked uh, during a, uh, your NFPA um, 1911 uh, service check. They'll run the compressor, make sure everything's cooling as it should be and you're getting capacity of your compressor out. So uh, You can check out all of our compressed air systems at watersco.com. Um, you can also check into our Waters University and also look into our Eclipse Gen 2.0, which uh, takes a compressed air system, puts it in a touch screen, and uh, utilizes a pressure reducing valve. So even if you're using hot hydrants, we don't have to worry about the pressure and uh, matching the pressure of the air to the water system. So. Okay, as we're operating our calf system, there's a couple things uh, that we do watch. We do have an air pressure gauge. Uh, again, in the, when the auto sink is in auto, that should be within 10% and slightly biased on the air pressure uh, over the water pressure. But in the auto position, uh, again, it's something that I can note, I can check on, but um, it should be balancing that air pressure to the water pressure. The auto sink is set up in the unload mode. 
Um, it will build no pressure. It's just circulating, keeping the system cool. And if I want it to go up to a fixed pressure, uh, which is generally set at 150 PSI, I can use that for blowing out lines. I can also cap a pre-connected two and a half that I have off the rear to use for ice or water rescue uh, or run air tools or anything else at that point. So, but for firefighting, we keep it in the auto position. Then it ma automatically matches our air pressure with the water, the solution pressure. The other thing that I'm going to watch as I'm operating my compressor is I have a temperature gauge. Um, it isn't abnormal to see the temperatures get up into 185, 200 degrees, especially if my uh, water from the tank is, is heat saturated and I'm circulating that water. If we see it get up to uh, 235, 200, uh, 235 uh, degrees, I will have a high temp alarm that will come on, so I'm, I'm either not moving enough water or I need to look at my Y strainer, make sure that uh, uh, you know it isn't plugged up, the water flow that uses the cooler. So a couple of the things that I'm going to watch as, I, uh, as I'm operating is just the temperature of the uh, compressor oil and the, and the pressure on the system. One question we're asked quite a bit is uh, what type of foam we recommend. There's many types of Class A foam recommendations out there, manufacturers of them. One thing that we do recommend is um, that the foam is on what we call the qualified products list. If you go through the U.S. Forest Service, they've got uh, what's called the QPL or a list of Class A foams that can be used on U.S. Forest Service land. So they're tested for biodegradability, uh, eye irritation, um, making sure that they don't kill fish in the percentages that they're used with. So um, with Aspirated foam, again, I talked about before, one of the things that we wanted to do is, is bubble up and it's really important when we use it for compressed air foam because we have to have that soaping that allows the air and the water to mix together and it gives us a, a, a what we call a, um, a foaming up of the material which allows it to stick high in the uh, high in the room. The other thing that we look for is a long drain time. We want to keep that water in the bubbles as long as we can. So we're looking for a, a, a class A foam that foams up and also um, you know retains its water or holds its water for longer periods of time. So our, our recommendation is to find a, a foam. You can try different ones, see how they work with your system and uh, make sure that they are on that QPL or the qualified products list. Thank you. Thanks for joining in today. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to email us at Waters and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, also at watersco.com you can uh, download any of the specifics on our foam system, on our aqua systems, and also check out uh, Waters University and the educational uh, things that we have going on at Waters. So thanks for joining us today and have a great day.